Right. Yeah, that's really <laughs> true, boy. Yeah. Oh, would you yeah. Do? Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure everybody would answer yes to that. I think this is going to be yes. a really fun subject. Well, hi, Barry. <laughs> hi, Christine. Welcome through. back. <laughs> Thank you. It was good to take a week off. Um, we are Let's Talk About Dating with Christine and Barry. Hi, Barry Selby. Hi, Christine Baumgartner. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see your face again. You too. So we're going to be talking about, are you dateable? Would you date you? If not, what would you need to change? I love this subject because it has so many layers. And the thing I kept thinking that kept popping to the front of my brain all the time is the subject that is near and dear to both of our hearts is where's your self-confidence level? Mm -hmm. Oh, Because that is such an important <laughs> foundation. It is. Don't you think? Don't you agree? It, 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 this really is, you know, I'm going to say it's like it's this it's the self-focus game, so to speak. It's the process of how do you, it's like, where do you really value yourself and appreciate yourself? Mm -hmm. And do you respect yourself? I mean, all these self-centric things, which I talk about in my work anyway, in this, this particular area, it's like, what do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. And do you trust yourself to bring yourself to the table almost? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yes. Can you, do you know who your authentic self is? Mm -hmm. That's certainly a subject we'll address. And yeah. then how comfortable are you being your authentic self when you're meeting somebody new or continuing on with somebody? Because that is a stumbling block for lots of people, especially, I think, well, I was going to say especially women, but don't you, men probably have the similar challenges, maybe a little different. Do what you do it differently? Um, I would say we have quite a list of challenges ourselves, but may not be the same. May not, I don't think it's the same list. I think they were different. We'll have compare notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So much. Yeah. So if we start out with the self-confidence part. You know, we've talked before that the two of us are big proponents of making lists of what is it that you don't want in a relationship and then focusing on let's, what's the contrast to that? What is it that you do want in a relationship? And the third list is who are you and what do you bring to a relationship? And I have to tell you, 80% of the time, and this is definitely mostly women, they have a lot of trouble making out that list because they don't really understand their positive attributes. They don't understand what they bring to a relationship. They haven't had somebody say that they liked it. They've had lots of criticism and they're really good at criticizing themselves. So I think that's always a really important place to start is what are the good things about you? Can you talk about them? Yeah. Can you really honor and, and really believe? Can you say it with belief? And can not you, just, can you, or, I would say, can you own it is even more accurate? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's better. Because, you know, sometimes people go, well, yeah, I think I might be nice. It's like, or stand in it. It's like, like, own, like, step into it, own it, embody it, take it on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Lola. We're glad to be here too. And thank you for being here. Let Thanks us know if you have any questions yeah. about this subject. So, so just to, to just side by slightly, because for men, we have, we have, I would say that we have the same problem of different reason. Because because men are not generally emotionally based, at least not naturally or consciously. So what men tend to do is present what they have or what they do versus who they are. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the possessions they have, the victories they have, like you know, they run a big company or they have a nice car, those levels are where the things get messed up because that's first of all, that stuff is transitory. And secondly, it's not what the woman wants to know anyway, because the woman, the woman wants to know can't you know can she trust him? Does he have a space in his heart for her? Has he has been here's he healed from his past relationships? Because most men haven't done the work anyway, because that's not what men generally do. We just go on to the next and the next. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly pieces of this puzzle which is true for women and men too. But yeah. the thing for also is that we 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 are not naturally again, these are generalizations to be clear, but for men we are generally more um, stoic. We're not so emotive. Right. So expressiveness is not very overt. So for most women, it's like they're going to like, you know, need a hammer and chisel to like chip through to get to who we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really true. And generally men, you like to solve your problems on your own. You want to mm -hmm. come up with the solution. You want to power through it, as you said, but you also, it's not like you don't want to come up with a solution, but you want to figure it out yourself. 
you know, you want to not ask for help until you really, really need it. Until yeah, that, that, hard, too many hard things have happened in a row. For most men, that plays out as being manual. What manual? <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. Well, no, yeah. it's the joke. It's the joke. Is you know, we, I mean, I do, I do it myself. I catch myself and laugh about it. You know, open a box from Amazon or some other thing I got, and the first thing I do is try to go for whatever it is in the box, and the manual just gets thrown away. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it's, you know, the, the 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 quote, you know, RTFM, which is read the effing manual. Yeah. yeah. Is, a, is a rule that men don't follow very well. So mm -hmm. we're not not necessarily not so much we're not trainable, but we're not reflexively looking for resources outside ourselves. No. Like no. I'll do it myself. I'll get it fixed. I'll get it handled. No matter how bad I screw it up, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Yeah, and it's part of your charm. If we accept that this is how you are. If you can get to the okay. level we see as charm, that's great. <laughs> I've really worked at it. I have to tell you, it's really been a labor of love because yes. if it is who you are and I'm going to accept who you are, then I'm going to find it charming. Right. And I accept that until you're ready because the thing I've learned when men call me, they are so ready. They don't need to be talked into anything. They're like, well, how much does it cost and how do you, what do you take? What kind of credit card do you take? I mean, that's really almost that easy. I mean, I do have a conversation with them, but right. it's a much longer conversation for the woman to trust me and feel like I've really heard her. And if he's seen my posts and he's got, especially if he's come as a recommendation from a former client, he is already sold because he's that's gotten great. to the place where he knows he wants outside help. He knows he can't figure it out himself. He's done it all that and it hasn't solved this, the problem. He needs right. a solution and he's come to what he's considered, I'm appreciative of that, a trusted source. So yeah, it is a really big difference between men and women in that way. Oh, yeah. And I, I think it's lovely, but I really, you got frustrated until I learned that about men, how much importance you place on figuring it out yourself. Where we women want to ask 14 friends and get 14 different opinions and then we're even more confused <laughs> so neither one of them is the smoothest route it's just we have to accept that that's part of women's charms right uh, yeah i mean it's funny because because my clients are all women i don't work with men at least there's not this point i haven't had men as clients but with my, with my clients it, it's like even though we do a discovery session at the beginning it's usually going to be like two or three conversations before they'll even think about saying yes because yes. what they why i know clearly is they go no they can trust me yeah and you know, I, I know I'm untrustable. I know I can do the work, but it's like they need to verify that for themselves. So they may do all the research online to check it out on my posts and my my presentations. They know that it matches who I am. Yeah. But when they talk to me, they want to make sure in their heart of hearts that they can trust me before they go forward. And it's, yeah. it's a lesson I've had to learn because my, yeah. my thing is, of course, I'm like, let's do it. I'm ready to go sort of thing because I'm the guy. I can you know move forwards, as you said. Of course. But I recognize, I recognize with the clients. And, and actually, it's been a good lesson because the other part of that side part is is this is a different level of the conversation is one of my coaches said to me, it's like, if I'm working harder than my clients, I need to refer them to somebody else. Yes. So if she's checking me out and testing me out, I'm also observing from my perspective to make sure that she's asking the right questions, that she's really checking out the right place so that when we do jump in together to do the work, she really is ready to do the work as well. Just different, oh. just different way to get there than the men are, you know? Yes, 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 they need to be ready. Yeah. They so need to be ready. So there it is right there. Are you really ready to be dateable? There we go. <laughs> I think that is the foundation of this conversation today. Because if you're not, how do you get ready? How do you get ready to be dateable? Because some of the, boy, my mind is still, some of the indicators Mm -hmm. of not being dateable and not being ready is you're really afraid. You know, it seems like a really good idea for everybody else, but I've heard all these stories. This is what I hear. I hear all these stories and there's scammers and there's terrible people and I don't want to get taken advantage of. I don't want to get my heart broken again, put that in parenthesis. So that's a very real way to feel. And it's important to address that and say, okay, what are you going to do about that? You know, let's look at the real concerns about dating and then the sort of made up concerns that can keep us from dating, can avoid us from dating, that they sound like really good reasons, but they're not very accurate. <laughs> it's true. And, and, it's and on that note, it's also the sense that I've had with, with, um, with clients is that 
they're afraid of dating because of their past experience. Yes. And so, cause, cause they're also afraid they're going to do the same thing again and again and again, because they don't know how to do things differently, which is why they're just, you know, talking to either one of us, we'll give them a different perspective so that when they go back into dating, it changes everything. Everything. So, so the thing is also about dating is like, are you in a rut? Are you, are you in the same old habit pattern of dating? We haven't changed anything, but you're getting the same result. I'm wondering why it won't change. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a couple of quotes. I mean, the, I mean, the famous quote that's attributed to Albert Einstein about, you know, doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results, definition of insanity. But the one I like better is, is, is by George Santayana, who I've used before in my books, which is, um, those who fail to learn from the history are doomed to repeat it. Wow. It's so true. And that's a, that, that was a quote based on national wars and history. But the truth is, it works in dating as well. <laughs> because if you don't learn from what didn't work before, then you keep repeating it in the future. It's so true. And then we start getting down on ourselves. You know, it must mean I'm a bad person. It must mean that I only deserve this. I must mean that there's only this kind of person in the world that I keep dating that's not right for me. Right. And truly, I am going to say out loud, none of that is the truth. None right. of that is the whole truth. It, none of that is the whole truth. That, but, but it's a very good clue that if the same thing happens over and over, you're like, oh, huh, what control do I have over that? There you go. Yeah. So there's that other famous saying or story about how, you know, you, you keep, thank you. It is yeah, a good question. question. <laughs> you we walk in the street <laughs> and you step in this hole. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you go on. And you finally go, oh. I'm stepping in this hole. You finally get conscious of you're stepping in this hole. That doesn't stop you from stepping in the hole, but you're at least aware of it now. So now you go, what other choices do I have? Huh? I could walk around the hole. Okay. Walk around the hole for a while. And now you're like, huh? Do I like even being on a street that has holes? Maybe I'll change the street. And yeah. that's a lot of the process that you and I talk about with dating that makes you shift. And another thing I've been coming up with lately a lot with people are they're like, I want it faster. And I go, I get that. <laughs> Challenge with our ingrained sensibilities, our old messages from when we were growing up and how our parents treated us or what relationship we saw them happening, having, and then what we've experienced with friends and love relationships throughout our life is it's pretty ingrained. It's that very trod on path. You know, we're really good at that path and it's gotten kind of big. So what people want is a speedboat kind of change. Let's make a 90 degree. Cause you can do that with a speedboat. You can like zip over there. You can really like, oh, I want to go this direction. But what I tell people generally with relationships and especially when it's dealing with your heart and your sensitive emotions is this is an ocean liner. Yeah. The kind that's got, you know, <laughs> 20 floors and thousands of people and they change course, but it takes a really long time and it's tiny bits at a time. And I think they're almost relieved because often we don't want to make a big shift if it's right. something that feels too scary or hard. So if I tell you, we're going to just make little incremental changes and first you have to trust Okay, yep. you're not going to die. Nothing horrible is going to happen if you make this tiny little choice, this tiny little change. And then you're going to come back and go, well, that wasn't so hard. And wow, there really was some good things that happened with that. So then they're going to go, okay, what's the next tiny little change? <laughs> yeah. And we'll keep doing this course correction. Isn't it? Because I know that's so much part of your coaching too. It is. The, the model I use, I mean, that model is great too. And I think about it in different part, in different framework. But the thing is, I learned this from when I was going through one of my program, programs I was taking, was the idea where you have this, this it was a, uh, a practical demonstration they had with it. They put on, on the floor, they'd laid out three foot, so they put like tape lines out, three foot lines across the room, you know, three foot, six foot, nine foot, all the way up to like 33 feet. And they basically had these, like, the, you know, these ring toss things. We had these little, um, like, there were little poles that were about a foot high sitting on cross feet, and you throw rings on top of them, like an indoor game of rings that you do at foot fun fairs. And they said, okay, so we, before we started, they said, okay, let's, let's put everybody and make a choice. Which would be your preferable distance to throw at? Based on the fact that if you imagine that each, each, um, each point is like more success or greater number, like the, the higher the number, the better. So if you say, oh, I'll do 33 feet, it's like, okay, great. 
So they started putting out 33 feet. People throw, and they had like people were taking choice to throw the rings, and almost nobody got one in. No. And so again, and it was 30 feet, 30 feet, and so so on, so on. And the lesson became very clear is they, and we actually used this in the conversation afterwards. Every time we talked about taking next steps and, and working on your goals and having big visions, is what's the what's the three foot toss? What's the next step you can do that is a guarantee? Because three foot, you can lean over and drop it. It's so easy, but we forget that we can do easy. And so, yes, it takes more steps to get there, but each step is a victory. And the thing about this is that those wins become accumulative, meaning that when you do have a victory where you had success, it builds your self esteem. Yeah. So the side effect of doing the work is not only getting close to your goal, but you feel better about yourself doing it. Yes. Because you're and aiming, we're willing to do the next thing. Yes, because if you're doing the one big thirty-three foot toss and you miss, it's like you're generally slightly despondent, like, oh man, that didn't work, and so you start feeling down on yourself. So why not make it easier and more successful and more supportive to do the actual steps? And so, yeah, yeah it's a great little model. So that works as well. I I love that analogy so much. And it's funny how many people complain about how hard dating is. <laughs> and I look at like, well, do you see how you're making it hard? How you could make it not so hard? I mean, that's the thing. We don't realize there's options. We don't realize there's choices on how to make it less hard. Well, true. And also the question about choices, what are you looking for in dating? Are you looking to just date to have fun? Are you looking to date to meet somebody you want to spend your life with? There's a wide spectrum in there. Yeah. So if you're dating to have fun, you only need one or two short steps because you get out and have fun, done. Okay. But if you're looking for something deeper and longer, then the preparation work is vital. And that's where those, those small steps you can do and succeed on are better. Yes. Yes. So there we are back at who are you and what are you looking for and what do you bring? Yeah. And it's funny how people don't always want to start there. They always still want it to be the problems outside. It's mm -hmm. outside of me. And it's sad because when you think it's outside of you, that's a very victimization way to feel that the world is happening to you and it's out to get you and that you can't ever have good. Where if you feel like, wow, I do have some choices and when I make a different choice, I get a better for me result, mm -hmm. then you start feeling much more in control of your life. Absolutely. Uh, that 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 um, depletion of your own energy because you're putting the responsibility on somebody else to make you feel better. I mean, we can, we've had a conversation with codependency before, so I don't have to go into that now. But the fact that we're not taking responsibility of our own choices and not taking action to support ourselves, it's kind of like, you know, you can't be babied anymore. You're no longer a three-year-old. You've got to be willing to step up and take responsibility for what for your actions, but also your responses to the actions. Oh, yes. Responsibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> big adult word, huh? Yeah, except it's not as bad as it sounds. <laughs> no, it doesn't make it really scary. Yeah. Because... Yes, you are taking responsibility for the things that haven't worked. Okay. And if you're turning all your control over to somebody else, then they get all the glory too for the things that are working. And I want to take responsibility and get credit for the things I'm doing well. Right. But I know you said there, which is the point about this, is that when you look at yourself and go, I didn't do it right, I screwed up, I lost out. But they did it right for me. So therefore they're winning. It's like interesting the dichotomy of putting the goodies on somebody else and the bad news on ourselves. I know. It's like people do that. I hear it all the time. Yeah. It's like, and no. people don't realize they're saying it. They just right. don't realize how much they're pounding themselves self down and not even taking credit for, because they'll tell me stuff and I'll go, well, that was really good. I go, they go, really? I go, well, yeah. I think that was a really good job. I think you made a good decision. I think that was really well thought out. And it wasn't the other person, it was really you. You were taking control. Yeah. You were making good decisions for yourself because of the information that we've talked about and that you've been practicing. And then poof, look what happened. It feels like, you know, the overnight thing that you've been working on for months or years. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the recognition also is that, is that you get to have the celebration of yourself because you're the one doing it for yourself. You see, yes, you're at the date to meet somebody else, but the truth is you're really doing it for yourself. So why not own up to that and enjoy it? And one of the other benefits, the bonus benefits of that is the more confident you feel and the better you feel about yourself, the less you're going to put up with somebody who doesn't treat you that way. And you'll also be more attractive. So you've got both those going for you. You'll have, you have cleaner boundaries, say no to step back 
and the people who are right for you, we go, wow, they're cool. <laughs> so you'll have that benefit. Yeah, because you'll have more love for yourself, which makes you glow and has gives you a chance to have more passion about your life. It's got so many benefits when we stop getting in our own way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, this yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So bottom line is this, is that, you know, it's worth doing the work. Oh, beyond, beyond. And I think I brought up before that I read that Brene Brown got to go to um, Pixar and they showed her how they come up with movies and they have this board where they just put everything up that could ever imagine doing with no mm -hmm. filtering, no editorial. And then they get to the second board where they're really going to dig in and do it. And there's stuff that falls apart and they get mad and they're like, whose idea was this? And I don't think it's going to work. And they're just get all frustrated with each other. And then they get to the third board and it's like, it's making money and it's out there in the world and people are excited about it. And in the middle, we're like, I want to skip this middle part because it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> so uncomfortable. <laughs> Yep. That digging in stuff can be so uncomfortable, but it always, le if we stick with it, it gets us to the place where like, that was so worth it. Well, that's the thing is that I don't believe you can get to the first step without the second step. You know, I don't think so either. No, no. It's like, like you know, to be blunt and put in the simplistic terms, babies learn to walk by falling down. Yep. They don't go from sitting down to walking instantly. They, they stand up, holding on to something, then they fall down again. Yes. But they don't go, that's it. I've had enough. I can't do it. I'm not gonna, never going to walk. Babies yeah. don't do that. They go, let me try again, and they keep doing it. And so that's yeah. the thing with this idea when we when our coaching, you know, it's like our clients. I know I'm speaking for yours. I know, but I sense that our clients will oftentimes go, that didn't quite work the way I wanted to. Great, let's regroup and let's refocus because the thing about dating, like anything else, is it's an educational journey. Yes. So to learn where things work and where things don't work, it can course correct. And that's the thing about the confidence piece we're talking about, having that sense of ownership of your space, because you've you've realized what works for you makes you more attractive because yeah. you're not like fiddling things out all the time. You're going, you know what? I know where I am. I know where I am. If it works great, if it doesn't work, it's great. And that's the thing. When you become detached, it's even easier. Oh, oh, being detached <laughs> about your emotions. Oh my. Oh yes. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's an enlightened nice. place. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I love that you bring up course correction because the, some of the other analogies I use is like riding a bicycle or a sailboat. It's not a straight shot. It's always, no. oh, that's working, but I need a little bit more of this. And that's working, but I need a little more of that. And just how do you keep on course, but doing the correcting without feeling like, oh, I'm giving up. And boy, that yes. is what we can talk about when we get back from Indeed. our break. He Indeed says, can. Yes. It's time for all of our great commercials. We'll be right back. See you in a minute. On me. <laughs> um, yes. So that's so, that piece on just one PS because it was like the thing you did before the thing about course correction. Yes. Um, again, something I learned a seminar years ago the idea about the fact that when you get on the plane ride from like LA to New York, 
you're you're off course like 94 percent of the time which is people go what it's like planes don't go straight lines because of winter you know wind wind currents air currents all that sort of stuff the planes always course correcting and you said like running a bike or even on the sailboat it's like i know when i'm running a bike i know more i mean and it's, this is the thing it's subconscious i'm not right going i need to go three degrees left or two degrees right it's like it's, it's just naturally just turn the handlebars to go the right way along the path yeah. So the fact that we think that in dating it's a straight line, no, <laughs> it's, it's course correction, same as any part of life, really. But the thing yeah. is, what we don't realize is oftentimes we do it automatically without thinking about it. Yes. And so when we're doing things that are more on the cutting edge of our consciousness, so to speak, or on the place of our experience, that's when we get maybe get more nervous and less 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 or, or more attached than we'd rather be. That's why let's make detachment early. So that ties into the fact is that. Let's let's go with the flow and see where it goes, rather than trying to make it a straight line. Yes, such a good point, and, and I think it too is um, interesting that so often most areas in our life, we know we're not going to be good at it right away. We need to try and fail and try and do something a little different and keep course correcting and. Dating just seems to be one of those things that we think we should just know, we should be good at, it shouldn't be hard. Boy, that just is false advertising. Whoever sold that bill is going to be <laughs> covered in oil and given to a pile of ants. Because okay. it's not true. I know. It's Your not visuals are true. great. <laughs> Thank you. It's not true. Yeah. Everything in life that's worthwhile, everything in life that involves something that's going to be in, ultimately future important to you isn't just one and done it's not mm -hmm. how it works in life we always have to learn and grow and and try something new and i want to just keep telling people that it's really normal it's normal <laughs> to have failures and frustrations and have it not work out and i mean how many people have you talked to that go i tried online dating twice and it didn't work, so I'm never doing it again. I well, did it like, for three and a half years to meet my late husband. <laughs> I mean, I, my goal is to help clients get there faster because it took me a while to accumulate all the information that I now teach in a shorter amount of time. But still, we both have programs that go on for a little while because mm -hmm. it takes a while. And you just know, you just have to know that. Well, the thing that's funny, you said the question is like, you know, they come up to you and tell me something that they've been on a lady. They, they don't normally tell me how long they've been dating online no. until I ask them. Oh, because <laughs> you said it's like, yeah, they don't oh, they tell me all the time. Oh, no, because they normally come and say, like, yeah, I've tried online dating. And I was like, and I say, how many dates you've been on? One. It's yeah. like, because the thing is, they don't own up to that right away. At least my clients don't usually own up to that because they're just like saying, well, I tried that, done, that didn't work. You know? Yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's know. all, because the thing is, part of it is because it's continually variable. You know, oh. only the, not only the dating apps are variable, but also the people you meet are variable. So you don't know what you're getting into. So, you know, it, it is about, you know, and, and I know in the sales conversation, they talk about, you know, the more no's you get, the closer you are to your yes. Yeah. So in dating, it's not that much different in some ways. Like the more mismatches you meet, then the closer you are to meet the match you want to be with. Yes. So it's, so you got to do more than one. Yes. Because <laughs> what I found is I would show up for the date and I'd say, so what about what I said in my profile was them and some things weren't. And I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to write it differently. Maybe I need to ask new, some additional questions before I meet them in person. I really learned that because I told you about that guy that I met and he started shaking physically and I was like, what's going on? And he lived with his mom and he hadn't told her he was going on a date and he was thinking she might not like it. And I'm like, oh my God, he's 35 years old. <laughs> so not my guy. But I never thought to ask somebody who they lived with before. <laughs> right. I added it to my list of questions. Yeah, you know? that, that, that's, there's so much to this about, well, but let's put it this way. We make massive assumptions about other people. Yes. And it's a, it's, so it's good to get clear if you want to do that. It's also good just to have the sense of recognizing that you're, um, again, exploring new territory and you're making um, choices that then you can course correct from. Yeah. Because the, the other part, a lot of people I know, they're attached to them being right. And having the you know making the first choice the one choice and being perfectly right the first time, which is ninety nine percent inaccurate. Yes. So being willing to go, okay, didn't work. Let me try something different. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's not life or death. 
And so one of the things that make you more dateable is being more relaxed about the process. Mm -hmm. So what I tell people, the very first goal you should have at your first meeting is to know you're going to get to meet a new person and you get to learn about a new person and you get to pay attention to your reactions to meeting a new person and how comfortable are you talking about yourself? How comfortable are you asking I'm curious questions so you don't feel like you're interviewing or interrogating them? And it took once I came up with that kind of a thought, I was like, wow, I wasn't very good at it right away. <laughs> it took practice. Go figure. Go figure. Right? Yeah, exactly. Because we're not good at anything. Well, some people have God given natural talents of stuff, and they still take lessons. I mean, look at Tiger Woods. He still has a coach, he still right. has somebody who teaches him how to keep swinging better. So even when you're excellent at it, it's still good to get coaching. But most of people are really terrible about dating. So you really need to just keep paying attention to what worked, what didn't. Do something different about the didn't work. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it makes you a more fun date if you come with the only expectations that you know you can win at are you're going to meet a new person, you're going to learn about them, and you're going to talk about yourself. It's not uh -huh. your spouse. It's not even no. a second date. So you don't feel like you failed. I mean, that's the thing. You set it up with attainable goals, right? I was going to think, I was sort of reflecting back on the date I had. This is going back a few years ago when I went through a dating, I was using a dating service, not a dating app. And went on the first date with somebody and recognized how they didn't have a clue who I was in the dating service because the person they matched me with was nothing like us and I want to be with. And oh, it, was, it, it, it was really messy in that sense. Oh, but the my. Thing is, but I look back at it and laugh now because the truth was, you know, it was somebody, I mean, we, we, you know, we met, we met somewhere like all the, the usual rules are daytime safe, you know, we bought our own coffees. It was just very, very clean, no problem. But the thing was, is that when, when we discovered that like she was a uh, right wing, very strict Christian and I'm, I'm a left leaning Jewish spiritual person. There was a clear, yeah. clear a lot of things working out there. So I'm like, you know, and in my, in my dating profiles, yes, I'm single. In my dating profiles, I do have that list so people know more about me. But in the, the dating service, didn't bother to notice that stuff. And these are people who are trained, in quotes, to know this stuff. So well, at the end of it, you know, she was kind of upset about things because she was like paying good money to be a service. And I'm going, this was just an experiment. So I didn't take it personally. And good. so definitely that piece about being unattached and exploring the new person, you know, I also knew that I could not offer her my coaching services because she was so closed off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, it was, so it was fun, but the thing, but the guess again, back to your point is, for, I mean, I don't, again, from my perspective from her side was she was very attached and wasn't happy with the result. But from my side, it was totally like, that was interesting. Not yeah. what I'm interested in, but it was, an, it was a fun way to get out the house. <laughs> yes. And wow. Isn't it interesting to have a conversation with somebody who is so opposite? I've had those conversations yep. and because I wasn't attached to it. I didn't get all emotional about it. I was like, wow, interesting perspective. Hmm. Convinces me even more that I believe what I believe. <laughs> yes. Interesting yes. to hear your point of view. Mm -hmm. And they they could make really good arguments for their point of view, which I admire a lot. It wasn't just, you know, Facebook said or the news said or my mom said. They really had very good information that I was like, well, that's really clever and really smart. And you've really done research and it still isn't going to change my mind. But I admire that you've really thought this through. So it was a totally interesting conversation. We ended up parting going, that was really fun, but oh yeah, no, that's not gonna happen again. But I didn't feel like, I didn't feel discouraged. I didn't feel like right. it was a bad date at all. And we were just as different as you. Right, and that's the thing I wanna make sure people who watch this get, from both our cases, we got the fact that it was an exp exploration. It wasn't what we wanted, it's okay. We can move on to the next one. Yes. Because that's a choice too. Yes, yes, yes. So then if the same kind of wrong for you person keeps showing up, you're like, hmm. So I did lots of tweaking to my profile because of that. I did tweaking in the questions I was asking people. I did tweaking on which sites I went on. And it was very educational and helpful. And I tell people it is kind of like having another job because you do need to devote some time and energy to it. Yeah. And it's your precious heart and hopefully a lovely relationship for your future. And isn't that worth it? I think so. I thought so. Absolutely. It worked for me. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got a lovely husband out of it, really. Right. He died, but he was a great yeah. husband while he was alive. And he was even more than what I'd asked for. He was all the things I asked for because I kept tweaking my profile. And I've said before that when he read my profile, he went, oh, well, that's what I am. Check, check, check. And that's what I'm looking for. Check, check, check. Because I'd gotten even more clear in the story, not my list. I didn't put a list on my profile, but the story of who I was and what I was looking for. I just kept getting more and more clear about it with each successive date that I went on, or even the couple of brief relationships I had. I was like, what is it I have to have differently next time? And how do I put that in my story? Yeah, that's the course correction when you're off course. It's not so much as changing course. It's like, what can I do differently to get back on course more effectively, more accurately? Yeah. So yeah. it's always that improvement. So yeah, that's great. So if you use like the, the cruise ship or even the sailboat, <clears throat> you know, they're always moving the sheets i've learned they're not sales they're sheets and oh okay. and, I, thought yeah, they're not sales. Sales. I thought so too <laughs> i've learned they're sheets they trim the sheets and that there's all this like when you i got a tour of an engine room once on a cruise ship and there's a pile of people it's not <laughs> just a little steering thing i can't think what that the ground thing is called but the steering wheel it's not just that you turn the steering right. wheel there's all the the water balancing it and the engines changing and the little rudderry things. And I mean, there's all this stuff to move. And I think we're very complicated, our bodies, our minds, our emotions, our heart. We have a lot of things that we need to be considering and taking into thought when we're going to do some course correcting. It's not just, I'm going to change my mindset, but I need to say, well, if I change my mindset, are my emotions going to go wacko? Because they're going to go, well, that's too scary. And what safeguards are we going to have now if we think, oh, we're going to go date somebody differently? Right. So I think if you take it as a whole, your whole being that's dating, that will help you be more dateable. Yeah. It, it, it. <laughs> there, there's, there's so much there's so much about course correction that is so missed by people they just like they just yeah. like you know they just forget that do the next one and and that, so let me just break down another way just so people get in case they're missing what we said so far in a clear way sure <laughs> you're so good at that i always count on <laughs> to refine it down yeah is that for a lot of people it's kind of like you know that didn't work let me try something different that didn't work let me try something different that didn't work let me try something different versus that didn't work let me let me adjust my sails and, and my trim trim my sheets whatever that is I to move, move towards where I want to go. Because I know where I want to go, but I'm not sure how to get from here to there completely. But I know what a next step I can do that is on the right journey towards that goal is. And then you go, okay, that didn't work. Like in another step that goes towards that goal versus just blindly doing new things without any understanding. It's just, it's, it's basically, have, it's almost like walking around blindfolded going, let me see where I'm going sort of thing. It doesn't work. No. But some people and do it that way. That The other little piece too is, um, why do I think it didn't work? And sure, you can spend your 10 minutes on they were shitty people and, you know, they lied on their profile and they weigh 400 pounds and they said they didn't. I mean, sure, you can spend <laughs> right, 10 right, minutes right. on that. I'm okay with that. And then we need to have a conversation with why did they show up? Why? What, how did that happen? How can you have it not happen again? Not to give yourself a hard time or pound on yourself, but do you not want that to happen again? Then how right. do you prevent that? What? Do you change your profile? Do you ask different questions? Do you need a different mindset? Do you need to feel more open? Because if you're getting people that are lying, are you maybe lying a little? Maybe to yourself? I know. <laughs> I've had that conversation. With my <laughs> I know. And it's never to give yourself a hard time. There's really good reasons we feel the way we feel, that we think the way we feel, we act the way we feel, that was formed before we had filters. You know, we're raised to just take it all in. You know, the people that are the giants in our house that are responsible for our physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well being, we just have to take it all in and generally don't question it at all. Right. And now our job as an adult is to say, does that really fit me? Is that working for me? Is there something I need to be doing differently so that I can have a different experience? <clears throat> I think that that's an eye-opening conversation that I have frequently. I bet you do too. <laughs> it is something that oftentimes is not what they expected to hear from yes. me. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> the thing is, I, I mean, that's, I guess we've both done enough work to know that the root causes and the the guidance that people often use is not the effective way to do things. Yeah. And so when they're looking to do adjustments, it's like, you know, if you're on the Titanic, you don't want course correction, you want a lifeboat. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing is that in a lot of, I mean, I always, we don't know a lot of ocean analogies lately. I don't know why this was on topic today. But, we, but, the, but the reality is that it definitely happens where we oftentimes are feeling like we think that we're just going to do a quick adjustment and it's going to be fine. It's like, no, what is, what is it? You need some outside perspective. One of the things we bring, of course, is that, that altitude, that perspective that goes, I can see what you're doing, but really you need to be over here on this path, not that one, and then it'd be yeah. easier. Oh, so much easier because it's hard work. It's really hard work to do introspection and to change some ingrained habits that aren't working for you, even though they're not working for you and you really want to change them. It still takes work. So to feel like I can make this hard work have some easy parts, right. yes. And they really don't see that. They really often cannot, I couldn't before I went through it, to see the the perspective from out here of here's an, a tiny step, as you were saying earlier, just a tiny step that you're going to feel really successful about. Yeah. So just saying hi to people in a new way where you're not afraid to say hi to, I'm so afraid to say hi to people. Okay, let's try saying hi without being afraid. Just yeah. practice. Because what's the worst thing that'll happen? You're out in public, you know, you're in the middle of a supermarket, just say hi. Just say mm -hmm. hi. Three people. Say hi to three people. Just practice. And they come back, they go, it wasn't so bad. I go, oh, I know. And did they say <laughs> hi back? Two of the three did. That's good. So now we're going to move on to the next thing. So it starts making you feel successful and more open and more available. And you can't be dateable. If you're not available, Amen to that. <laughs> really, right. oh, God, have yeah. we met the people that were so closed off? Not only that, but also, do you have time to actually accommodate a relationship? Do you have space in your life to accommodate a relationship? Not just are you oh. available to it, but have you made room to actually have that in your life? Oh. Because a relationship does require time and space. Yes. So dating is the first way that you find out, do you have time? Yes. Because people go, oh, I'm going to make time when I get in a relationship. No. <laughs> so even my, you know, one of the things I'll have people do is clean out a drawer. I need you mm -hmm. to have an, one empty drawer in your house. I don't care where it is, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom. I don't care. You have to have one empty drawer. It takes them sometimes a few weeks to get to that. Yep. And I said, this is where you're starting to open up some space. Because if somebody you invited, like if you got into a long-term relationship and they were spending the weekend with you, where are they going to put their things? And you can't just do it then. It makes them feel more welcome if you've already had a drawer, if you have like yeah. even a tiny oh. space in your closet. You uh, experience hey, this, I can tell. And, well, just, just when you show up at the house and they're like throwing stuff out of a drawer to put your stuff in. Yeah. That feels so last minute. If you, and, and it feels demeaning in a way because it almost feels like you're not worthy as yeah. the guest. Yes, you but, weren't so, thought about. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's massive because, because again, are you looking to date to have fun? Are you looking for date for a relationship? If you're looking to date yeah. to have a relationship, then presume that you're going to have one at some point. So what do you need to prepare for, for that to happen? Yes. I went out and bought this cute little chrome tray for them to put their things in out of their pocket, <laughs> like their wallet and their watch and their coins and their keys and stuff. And the because I didn't, first time they were just dropping stuff. And I was like, huh. So the next time when, I don't, I think it was, uh, the same person who had dropped it went, oh, there's a thing. And I said, I got that for you. <laughs> and I still have it. I have perfume bottles in it at the moment. But yes, right. I did that on purpose because I thought I would want that if I was mm -hmm. going to their house. I wouldn't feel like I was just dumping stuff on a night table. I'd want to feel like I have a, a place that's got my name on it. Right. So <laughs> that's another way to feel more dateable that you've made room in your schedule, because mm -hmm. there's people who they start dating and they go, and that is hard because all of a sudden they go, I really wasn't ready. So it'd be nice if you figured that out ahead of time. Yes, definitely. Yeah, because it's <laughs> heartbreaking heart for both people. Yeah. The person who gets left feels like it's worse, but the I've had people who I've coached after, you know, they've done that and said, oh, I don't do that anymore. 
they felt horrible. They mm-hmm. felt really horrible. They they weren't doing it in a callous way. They just had not explored, oh my gosh, I really don't have room in my life yet. And how do I create that space? So it is one of the things you and I do is to help people get ready to date, not just yeah. when they're already think they're ready, that sometimes they're not. And what is some of the steps? And this is it, that you need some space to look at profiles, write a profile, email somebody, talk to somebody, because you want to do that at least a couple of times before you meet them. And then you need time to go meet them. Right. So yeah. The question, so, so are you dateable and needs to be followed up by, are you ready for a relationship? Yes. Yes. Which is a big yes. piece. And, and I mean, there's so many pieces of the puzzle of that. that, that <sighs> I, mean, I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking how many topics we get. It's like so many options going, we go there, we go there, we go there. Oh. But Always. it is about it. it is it's what I was talking about before my my, my work about you know having space to accommodate somebody like you know if you're going to have somebody in a relationship. I mean, most people nowadays have this, but a lot of people would have forgot about it. It's like you know, do you have a bed that has two sides to it, like mm-hmm. nightstand, lamps that yes. match that sense of yes. correspondence, so the sense of space there? Because yes. you know, it's it's we're not we're not teenagers anymore. <laughs> Stop. So don't act like that. You know, what they said like the guy who was still living with his mother. That's. That's an interesting place to play in relationship. I know. Now, if it, it didn't now, happen it, again, though. I want you to know. I figured out how to have that not happen again. However, though, on the, on the flip side of that, if he is happened to be caregiving because his mother's sick and he's yeah. the only person to take care of her, that's a whole different conversation. So of I'm course. not not demeaning that. Yeah. But if somebody's staying at home because it's convenient versus doing it because there's another reason for it, yeah. again, what do you, what are you looking for in a relationship, and does that qualify or not? So get clear what yeah. you want, make your list, understand what you're doing to be dateable. Or should say what you're looking to date rather, and then do the work to be clear you're dateable yourself, and that you're also willing to be open enough and vulnerable enough to be in a relationship with somebody. Yeah. That's a whole nother level of taking you home to meet his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it is. Indeed, it is. That. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Thank you. It made me laugh in my head, so I thought I'm going to say it out loud because it was very funny. I didn't even. Yes. I didn't even think of it then. I just thought of it now, and it's so many years ago that it happened, but it was so. It was just left me speaking. Bizarre, yeah. That's like, what? <laughs> I know, but 35. Okay. So not yeah. my guy. Yeah. For so many so, reasons. So so the bottom line really is it is be willing to look in the mirror clearly, be willing to look at yourself honestly. And be honest with yourself. You know, yeah. are you ready? Or are you not? Are you if you are great, and then what are you gonna do the steps to take? And if you're not, are you willing to do the work to be ready to go to do a date? Now of course and if you, you don't want to do that work, yeah. Right. And of course, if you don't want to date, then this conversation is mute anyway. <laughs> you aren't going to be listening, probably. <laughs> right. This is about dating. But if you're curious about how to get ready, or you thought you're ready and it hasn't been happening, that's when you get to talk to Barry and I, because mm-hmm. we have been there, done that, got the t-shirt to prove it. <laughs> you know, that's been a new conversation. A few t-shirts. <laughs> I, yes, I bet it comes up for you, because I'll say, well, yeah, I did that. Or, yeah, I, I've had kind of a recent experience. And they're like, you too? And I go, well, yeah. Yeah. Wait. I'm a human being. <laughs> I get through it faster. I have really great tools at my at my beck and call because I've done this so many times. It's not that it doesn't still happen to me. Mm-hmm. There's still times I have to talk my stuff off the ledge. I do. It's just normal. So I'm living in the same trenches as you. I just happen to have more broad knowledge, more options that you might not have thought of. And I've had lots of successes in my life. So I want you to have the same success and you feel the same way, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. And it's also about having done the work and having trained enough to know how to self-facilitate now, which is one of the things I'm, one of the, I'm great for the gift I had through my work was the ability yeah. to self to self-counsel, self-process myself oh. through these places. So then when I know it's, so I'm always practicing on myself anyway. Yes. <laughs> so I can yes. so I get my clients more easily. Yes. Isn't that the best? Because yeah. I'm going to say one more thing before we do the closing, because it's yes. come up a lot lately. That's people like, well, they just think they know everything, you know, the professionals. Oh. And I think I will never feel that way. No. I know I know a lot and I'm grateful I know a lot. And I always know there's more to learn. And I get to learn more stuff every time I talk to you because you have new and different analogies that I haven't thought of. And I get to share and things. Vice versa. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm thirsty for it. I'm excited for it because I find it's good for me. And then it's, isn't it amazing how something looks when you're like, I just heard that. And now I can use it with a client. I love when that happens. (laughs) Absolutely. 
it's so speaking about how they can how they can reach us you want to lead off please oh yes please. <laughs> just like under the same we should wrap now so i want to make sure we get everything know. out he's always <laughs> ending our fun our chat sessions where we could just gab for hours yes so the way to get a hold of me is through my website, www.theperfectcatch.com. And you can sign up to have a complimentary conversation with me and we'll just explore what's been going right, what's been going wrong, what kind of course correction you might be in the mood for. And we could give it a try and I'm sure it will work better. You could also send me a private email, christine at theperfectcatch.com. And I'm on all the social media of Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Pinterest and Twitter and did I, Insta I think I Instagram. did Twitter and Instagram. I think I did Twitter twice and no Instagram. I think and you did that. Yeah. <laughs> tell them how to get a hold of you too, Barry. Certainly. So same same rules apply. You can find my website. You can email me yourself. Just leave my website is barryselby.com. You click on there, there's a, there's a button in the navigation said, let's chat. If you want to sign up for a conversation with me, it's a gift from me to you. We have 30 minutes to chat, discuss, work things out, and I can give you some tips. And if you want to work with me, we can talk about that too. Um, you can drop me a private email to my email, which is barry at barrysilby.com. On social media, um, I'm, I'm Barry Selby at uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and also on Clubhouse, which is where I've been picking up lots of great new information, by the way. Clubhouse has been a great place for me to play and explore and learn mm -hmm. and teach. Um, on Facebook, it's Barry, it's Facebook um, is Barry Selby, the author. And on Instagram, it's the real Barry Selby, which has also been getting very busy lately. So things are improving in lots of social media platforms. Oh, yay. I know. I found an uptick in mine, oh. too. So oh. I'm sure it's... I forgot YouTube is Barry Selby as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I put that one out there. I've got, right. a thousand, I've got a thousand videos over there, so people can definitely find my stuff out on YouTube. Lots of great teachings. You are so prolific. I will take that. Thank you. I was going to say proficient, and you're that too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm glad I make you laugh. Probably Cece's laughing Likewise. at you. Yes. Okay. Indeed. So we're going to wrap up, and we'll be back next week at 1 o'clock Pacific and 4 o'clock Eastern and all the other times in between. To talk about dating with Barry and Christine, and we'll see you next week. And if you have any questions, thoughts, comments about this broadcast, you can comment below wherever you're watching it on Facebook or YouTube, or if you're what we're subscribing to, let us know what you think. We'd love to hear oh, from you. We would love to hear from you. Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay, and we'll okay. see you next week. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>